Hi. Hello. <laughs> Giovanna, oh. so good to see you. Ooh. It's been so, well, two well, or three years. Well, it's so years. nice to have you here. Thank you very much indeed. Shall we go in? Yes. So Nicoletta, your daughter, was reminding me of how we met, and I think it's now four years ago. We actually met because she wrote into Pasta Granny's. She thought, what have I got to lose? I don't think Vicky's ever going to answer, and I did. And uh, that was the beginning of a friendship. So I'm really pleased to be seeing you again. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's wonderful. <laughs> and I think, I, I really, I think that what you're doing should be rewarded highly in <laughs> Italy because you're doing something that is extraordinary yeah. to document something that uh, we may not have in a couple of generations. Mm. Those of you who are not familiar, um, I have a YouTube channel called Pasta Grannies and uh, the second book is out and I wanted to show Giovanna some of the recipes from Sicily and one of them is arancini. I had hoped that Giovanna was going to make it but she has her own version and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the differences are. And even better, I'm going to learn something. I won't be holding the camera. I'm actually going to be trying to help you. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think you're going to be a very good helper. I hope so. <laughs> Take me through the recipe, Giovanna. These are arancini. Arancini is probably the quintessential Sicilian food because you encounter it everywhere on the street. Very nice, you walk around and you eat uh, your arancini. You don't need a knife and fork, unless you're extremely elegant at a dinner party. Sicily doesn't uh, grow rice, yet we have some really extraordinary rice dishes. This is one, uh, the arancini. The other is a bomba that we make, and, and wonderful things with rice that you wouldn't expect. So, this is boiled rice with saffron, and you get this wonderful sunny color. And what kind of uh, rice are you using? That's today? very important. The rice that I use for this is Arborio rice. This is Italian. Uh, there are many brands, but you want Arborio. And why is that? Well, to make this, you need a short grain rice that's sticky. Mm -hmm. So, here, oddly, you could substitute Japanese rice, which is short grain and sticky because they make a food that has to be picked up. And then it's important to let it cool? Yes. Then you let it cool, and now we're going to season it. So it's nice and claggy. You can see already that it's... So oh, it's all... Gonna, yeah. Mm. So we need... That is a very Yorkshire term, yes. claggy. <laughs> <laughs> My dad is from Yorkshire, okay, which is northern England. Claggy means sticks together. It's like a soil, a heavy soil. So we're going to add one cup of grated cacciocavallo, one of the great cheeses in Sicily. I mean, Parmigiano is a wonderful cheese. We know that. It's called the king of cheeses. So this is the queen of cheeses, perhaps. Uh, can you use Parmigiano? Yes, you can. But if you want to be authentic, and if you can find it, you use cacciocavallo. So I'm going to and use be that. be generous with it. Yes, yes. And now we're going to add two eggs. They're beautiful colored eggs. They're just from your local supermarket or? No, they are, they are from the local supermarket, but they are from a farm in South Jersey that belonged to the grandmother of one of my friends, and it's still in the family. I know that they... Happy chickens. The, the chickens are not unhappy. Okay, so we're going to mix it. Eventually, I'll start working with my impeccably clean hands, as our friend Julia Childs used to say. And when did you first learn to make arancini? In my childhood. Okay. I, from your granny? From yes, your nonna? Yes, mm -hmm. well, I yes. Well, I learned everything from my nonna. She had infinite patience mm -hmm. and she was infinitely indulgent with what a small child could be. But she always allowed me to help her in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I remember was when I was five and she was making uh, broccoli. Now, a piece of broccoli looks like the whole thing. So she would give me a piece and say, okay, make soup for your dolls. And she would direct me how to do it. Okay, so this, this is quite well mixed. This is the ragu that was made yesterday. Ragu is a mixture of beef, veal, and pork. Okay. You can use all of those or you can use any one. This is two pounds of meat all together, right? And it is uh, a mixture. I wanted to explain 
the uh, mozzarella. The brand name is Biazzo, and I have it here because my grandmother's name was Biazzo. To make arancini, you would not use homemade, or not homemade, but handmade mozzarella. That's fine for, you know, to eat, but not for this. It's too, it's too wet. The peas, a word about the peas. This is what you buy. Fresh harvest petite peas. But if you buy bird's eye, it's called tender tiny peas. Um, okay. <laughs> and these so, are a delight and they're totally delicious. So the French is petit pois. Petit pois, yeah. This is... This is a ricotta. Ricotta, okay. So now we have to cut little cubes of mozzarella. Okay. You have beautiful nails. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I decided when you're very old like me, you have to have your nails done every week. Ah, yes. Okay. And wear pearls. Because yes. Queen Elizabeth wore pearls when she was 99. Always, yes. always. They have a luminosity, don't they? That, yes. That's good. <laughs> so we're going to put about one or two nuggets into each arancino. Yes. Yeah. Well, two. That's why I make them small so they fit better. Okay. Okay, let's wet our hands. Okay. So we're going to take a ball of uh, rice. Yeah. We're going to make an indentation. We're going to put a bit of this ragu. You see why it's so thick? Peas. Okay. See, some people put the peas in the sauce, and I feel that the peas in the sauce get lost. I want them, I want to see green peas. So now I'm going to take another batch of rice, put it on top. So can I have a go? Go. Go. Okay. So, slightly scarily. Yeah. Go like that. Stick it in like a little nest in the middle. Is that enough? Yes. Yeah. Is yeah. that enough? Yeah. We're going to do that. A teaspoon of sauce. Is that too much? Possibly. You can try. Oops. Uh, mm, well, all right. Well, okay. Put a cube mm -hmm. of mozzarella in the middle. Mm, one of those, so it looked like a little bullseye. No, I don't know where you put the peas. Try. <laughs> <laughs> I've been too dangerous, haven't I? Oh, my word. So I'm going to kind of take a stick few. Stick them. Stick them in the sauce. And squid. Like that. <laughs> so mine's going to be mean with the Yours peas. Yours is going to be bigger. A good amount on top. Oh, my gosh. This is more difficult than I thought. <laughs> Okay, and now kind of gently like shape it. Muscles. Hang on, but I've been too generous with the. Yes, you were too generous with the ragu. Okay. Okay. So now a challenge. We need a yeah. challenge, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So the challenge is we're going to make the pointed one. So Nini said it was something like you had to kind of cup your hands like that. Well, you I do mean, it. You, it do, you do it whichever way you can. So let's let's make the ricotta one that way. No peas in this one. No peas. Thank goodness. So you're making an egg shape. Very gently. Well, the bottom has to be flat. Oh, okay. See, this has to be flat. So mine is a little bit. More lemon-like, isn't it? So let's make it a little more pointed. Okay. Oh, oh that's good. That'll yeah, pass. That'll pass. Good job. Um, so, Joanna, what now? We've made the arancini. Do they need to go in the fridge? Can you I cook would, them immediately? Yes. You can. I mean, theoretically, you can. But I'm going to put them in the fridge for 15, 20 minutes. Okay. So I'm going to take all the glory and say, here's some that was prepared earlier. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Giovanna made these yesterday. This is called arancinotto, ah. which means big orange. And it's meant for arancini. Okay, you pack this. This is a collar. This is a plunger. Now we pack this with the rest of the rice. Okay, I'm gonna pack it down a little bit. All right, did everybody say the prayer? Yes. <laughs> I'm not truth. gonna look. I'm not gonna look. Yay! Wow. It's perfect. Yes. But does it take you about three times as long as doing it by hand? That's right. And yeah. you never get a perfect circle. No. You never get it. 
but. So what's wrong with orincinoto? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> It'll taste the same, won't it? It'll taste the same. Yes. Mm. I'm going to put a half a cup of flour in the bowl. So here's a half a cup of flour. I'll get the water. Yes. A whole um, measure? Yes. This is a paste. That's all it is. Mm. Flour and water. Some people use eggs. Ah. But I, I think this is better because it makes a better adherence mm -hmm. for the breadcrumbs. But you want to use eggs, use eggs. Do you need any particular type of breadcrumbs? You need plain unflavored. That's important. You don't want to buy breadcrumbs that have parsley, salt, uh, cheese. You don't know what kind of cheese they've put in there. You don't know how long it's been on the shelf. Okay, see these are very solid. So we're going to do that. Okay, you want to do the bread? The breadcrumbs? Yes, okay. Because we should really do one. If you drop this in, then I'll yep. roll it around. Before you start deep frying, get a pan, cover it with uh, paper towels, and have it next to you. I have filled this with canola oil. I'm gonna turn the heat on, and then I'm going to lower it. We're right. testing one because if this is done, it means that the oil is in perfect temperature. I don't have a thermometer. Now, remember that everything in this has been cooked, so it doesn't have to cook. It just has to become crunchy. Look how long it took, no time. And since this is not something that has to cook, if they're done in a minute, that's perfectly fine. We can put another one. So we're finished frying. They look beautiful. Not a single one broke because Vicky was such a great <laughs> assistant. <laughs> so now we're going to cut one of each kind just to show you what they look like inside. Right, so Giovanna, moment of truth time. Let's have a go at um, opening one of these yes. arancini. They look absolutely delicious, and I feel like going like this, <laughs> pinging it to see how crunchy the outside is. <laughs> Looks absolutely wonderful. Can I take one? Yes. Okay, so let's just... Uh... This is finger food, everybody. Yes, we're being <clears> very polite not, with the knife. Not for a, a formal... Mm. So the round ones have round mozzarella ones. and ricotta. Yes, absolutely Wh yummy. White on white. Mm. So this one isn't in the book, but everybody who's watching this are going to want to know <laughs> how to get the recipe. Um, it will be uh, given <clears throat> in great detail. Mm -hmm. You heard the crunch. It's a really good tip, that flour paste. Very good flavor. And you can find the recipe on Food52 website. Shall we try another one? Yes. Mm. Oh, well, that looks nice, doesn't it? So you can see the peas and it looks almost like a You see why I like the peas uh, uh, independent of the sauce, because mm. you would never see them. Yes. And I like that touch of color. It makes color. a nice layer, doesn't it? Mm. So these, these cone-shaped ones are closer to the ones that Nini made, and her recipe is yes. in um, Pasta Granny's Comfort Cooking. And, uh, of course, her recipe differs from yours, which is as it should be because she comes from Catania. Of course. And um, so, look, this is lovely. She's got beautiful layers. There's the mozzarella at the bottom. And, again, this recipe is also found on Food 52. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Grazie. <coughs> mm. <laughs> so good. Mm -hmm.